everybody, it's Christy back with another video. So, in one of my most recent videos, I went through and I swatched all these Daniel Smith colors. And man, was that fun. I had such a good time. I really enjoyed looking at what I have versus what's out there. And I just got really excited and I bought some paints. So, I've got some things that I'm going to show you today. And then I'm just going to videotape myself filming this palette. And then after that, I will use both palettes, swatch them out now, and uh, talk about what I, I decided to do. So, um, first of all, here is my current Daniel Smith palette, and this is going to be a granulating watercolor palette. And I said maybe, but then I got excited, and I was like, guess what? I actually have quite a few granulating Daniel Smith paints. And so, if I took what I had and I added to it a little bit, I thought, yeah, we're going to be able to do that. So I'm going to fill this one with granulate. I'm not going to fill it. Like, there's no way I'm going to have this many wells. I bought this palette on Amazon. I am now um, an Amazon affiliate, so I will link this below. It is pretty cool looking. It's nice and sturdy. It has all of these nice deep wells. The thing I like about it is that it's all on one side. I'll show you what happens with this one. See what's going to happen. Timber, do you see that? It's going to fall out. So the only thing I don't like about this palette that I currently have is that the paint sometimes does come loose and fall out. I always use this on my desk though. I have a Daniel Smith watercolor palette that I travel with, but if I make a granulating palette, I might wanna take this with me sometimes. So I think it would be nice if all of the paint was here and then this goes on top so nobody would be moving around. So it wasn't an expensive palette and it looks like it's gonna hold up quite nicely. Obviously I haven't done anything else with it yet, but I at least wanted you to know about it. Okay, 
So here it is. Here is the granulating palette. And here is what we have in the granulating palette. I lined them up. It looked kind of pretty like that. I'm not going to obviously leave it like that. But I wanted to show you what I did. Um, the main thing I'm missing in this palette is some sort of cool red or pink color. So I'm going to have to see if I can find something that goes there. I know Potter's Pink is a granulating pink, but it's not a color I like, and it's really hard to re-wet, so I'm not thinking I want Potter's Pink. I may get something that, when it mixes, can granulate nicely. I know Opera Rose granulates, but it's fugitive, so I don't know that I want to use that and the light fastness of this palette is, is really good other than that. So I don't want to mess with that. But um, not that I'm necessarily doing light fast pieces, but I don't know. I just feel like if I'm going to buy quality products, I don't want to stick a fugitive watercolor in there. So um, here's what we have. This is what we decided to put in the granulating palette. I have Nickel Titanate Yellow and Yellow Ochre as my two yellows here. I have Quinacridone Sienna and Mayan Red. I have Imperial Purple and Moon Glow. Really excited to play with Moon Glow. And then over here I have my Lunar Black, which if you watched me putting these in, you saw that the Lunar Black was like sealed shut and I had to cut the other end off it and it was kind of messy. I need more Lunar Black, but I'll use up what I have first before buying more. Um, then we have Sap Green and Jadeite Genuine. We have Cobalt Teal Blue, Mayan Blue Genuine, and French Ultramarine. We have Sodalite Genuine, which is a stick I got in a sketch. I want to say a sketch box. Um, and so I'm just cutting a piece of the stick off and sticking it in there for now. And then we have Hematite Genuine and Van Dyke Brown over here. So this should be a pretty good arrangement of colors. I'm going to let these dry completely, both this palette and the other palette. I'm not bringing the other palette back over here because I don't want to cause an issue with dropping it on my floor while it's wet. I will show it to you once it dries and then I will swatch both palettes and kind of show what we're getting.
All right, so I feel like I feel like I've been filming this video for months, probably because I have been. I filled this palette months ago, and I'm just like, it's it's been a process just to show you all of this. But I wanted to do it kind of what I consider to be the right way, which was just to actually have time to play with the palette. Obviously, I've been playing with it. You can see that here, and I really like what I've done here. So uh, let's do the swatches. I have two different swatches for this. I have this swatch here, um, which is one I just did, and my goal with this swatch was literally just to put as much water as possible, no salt, no nothing, and then once it was starting to dry, I did spray it a little bit just to see if I could get any cool patterns with that and see how it broke apart. Um, I feel like it did a really good job here. So this is all the paints that I laid out for you when you when you see me fill the palette the a couple that are different here uh there is this pink that wasn't here before this is not a daniel smith pink this is a potter's pink um it's from my mary blue it is the potter's pink that i have i like it a lot i didn't really want to buy a daniel smith potter's pink because it's harder to re-wet this one tends to be a little better for re-wetting it is my favorite potter's pink so you know, it's Daniel Smith plus one My Mary Blue paint. Um, but overall, I just think these turned out really good. Some of them clearly break apart and granulate more than others. I love what Moon Glow does. I'll move it up here so you can see it a little bit better. But just cool. That um, Ultramarine, just what a neat thing that it does. So I did a second swatch card. Oh, well, I, I, this is the second swatch card. Here's the first swatch card, and it's got the names on everything. Um, except that it's missing the My Mary Blue. So here is the first swatch card. And the difference here is that, as you can tell, I used big chunks of salt on here just to see what would happen. Um, and I got some really cool effects with the salt. Obviously, I wouldn't use big chunky salt uh, to do an effect on a page. Usually, this like smaller sprinkle salt works better there. But I wanted to see how the salt would like dissipate and affect the paints and it like did this really cool thing with the cobalt teal where it breaks apart the colors a little bit more. Same thing with the imperial purple, same thing with the moon glow. So I don't know, it was really neat. That is the burnt sienna. Sorry, it's not labeled. I don't know why, but this is how the rest of them kind of shake down. And I think that it's really cool. And when you mix them together, they even granulate more, especially if you use any of the ones that really granulate a lot in with something else. So that was really neat. I did uh, several art pieces with this. I'm just going to show you two of them that I know I have easily and available. This is the first one right here, not this swatch, but this piece here. Um, turned out so cute. This wreath is so pretty, and I just wanted to go for something more muted. I wanted to see how it would do for loose florals because I do like to do loose florals, and often as a warm-up, this is kind of where I might start. So it didn't, I mean, I, I don't see a ton of granulation other than in the flowers, but it does add a neat texture to the flowers, and it looks really pretty. So this was a really fun exercise, and um, I, I just think it, it showcases the colors in the palette nicely. But I really wanted to push the granulation, so I wanted to do something fun with a landscape. So I did this piece. And guys, first of all, I'm very proud of myself for this one because I think it looks rather nice. Uh, the mountains, but look at the granulation, like that sky and the mountains and look at the the river. Like it's just, it granulates so beautifully. Like it really does work the way that I wanted it to on stone and on sky and whatnot. So I'm really going to enjoy doing this for, for landscapes especially. Uh, this piece really turned out well. Full disclosure on this one, I did use a little bit of Dr. Paige Martin's Bleed Proof White on the mountains. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to get that. But I did not use any white anything on the clouds. That's just a wet paper and me using water, clean water, and um, a couple of the colors of the watercolor. So I think that turned out amazingly well. And one last thing I want to highlight here, and I'm going to, to link it in the comments below. This palette was like eight bucks on Amazon, and I'm telling you what, it is a good deal. It's nice and sturdy plastic. These wells are super deep, and I don't feel like I'm mixing the paint colors at all. 
I have many more if I wanted to. They're all on one side. So even if stuff is loose, which right now, like look how nice and secure everything is in there. That's kind of amazing. But even if it comes loose, this just closes right over it. You can fit brushes in here. And then you can just snap this closed. It snaps really nicely. And you have this nice palette that you can take with you places. It's a little bit big for a travel palette, but I am really looking forward to being able to move it into different portions of places in my house. And I could definitely put it in my art bag and like nothing would happen. So I'm going to link this below because I think this is a steal of a palette. And if you are looking for a nice new palette to put your tube paints in, I would recommend this one highly. I think it's great. So have you used granulating colors before? I hear great things about the Schmenka Super Granulating Paints. Um, let me know in the comments below. It, did I miss a color or a pigment that you think I have to have in this palette? If so, let me know in the comments below. I, this is a work in progress. And like I said, I'm just an art hobbyist who is trying to build something fun and uh, different since granulating paints are all the rage right now. And I certainly love playing with them. All right, that's going to be it for me today. Ha I hope that you learned something. I hope this inspired you to get your paints out and uh, create some artsy bits yourself. Thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.